How's it going, everyone? Sam here, United People's TV, here with the predicted 11 and the preview. A conversation we're going to have ahead of this game against Brentford. After that second half against Villa, after that game against Wolves, after the games against Norwich and Newcastle, we're all sitting here waiting to see Ralph Ragnick's first game where Manchester United controlled it for the full 90 minutes. We were great, uh, great. We were good for 30 minutes against Crystal Palace. And we were better than good. We were very good for the first 30 minutes against Villa. But we haven't seen it for the full game. I want to see that control. What will he play? Who will he play? Would it be a formation change? Would it be a change of personnel? Ronaldo's back. Rashford's back available. I'm going to run through everything in this video. So please consider dropping a like on the video and subscribing to United People's TV if you're new. But before we head it over to the tactical board, take a look at the formation. Let's hear from the man himself about the team news. So we know that Harry Maguire was on the bench against Villa. We know that Luke Shaw and Scott McTominay, they're both available again after suspensions that ruled them out of the Villa game. Ronaldo's going to be back as well. So is Marcus Rashford. He spoke about Paul Pogba and he called him, an ex oh, he said he was an extraordinary, extraordinary player. And we all know that he could always be an extraordinary player. Uh, he's not going to be available, but he could be available to face Burry in the FA Cup, maybe Burnley. A lot earlier than expected. And with the Champions League coming up next month, is that a good thing for United? I think it definitely is. But look, let's head, over to, let's head over to the tactical board here and let's run through the formation that we used against Villa. And then we'll speak about the changes I think that's, that he's going to bring in. I nearly said Solskjaer there. Jeez, that would have been bad. But this was a starting eleven that played against Villa. <clears throat> if I'm looking at players that really, really impress me, I'm going to go for Elanga. Probably the most impressive player. I thought Tellez was very good in that first half. Dipped off in the second. You could say that about pretty much every team, every player in that team. I thought Greenwood played pretty well. I thought Bruno played pretty well. I thought Cavani played okay. But I wouldn't probably come out and say he was completely outstanding. Would I say Varane and Lindelof? I'd probably say Varane. I think Varane's in a good, a good vein of form. Does that mean that all of those will start, though? That's the big question. I think there will be changes. I don't think there's going to be too many changes. But what we saw there against Villa was a team that just cannot control a game for the full 90 minutes. And the question that Ragnick has to answer is how do you solve that? Now, I don't think that's going to come with any changes at the back. I think the, the back five that started against Villa will start again. Luke Shaw is going to be available from injury, not injury, sorry, suspension. But I don't think he's going to come back into the team. I thought Tellez did enough. Tellez was, it looked like the Porto Tellez, didn't it? Tellez down here, he was making lots and lots of overlapping runs, firing in a lot of good balls into the box. Tellez was dangerous. Really good outlet on the left-hand side. And it was a decent partnership that he had with Elanga down this left flank. It was probably United's most biggest threat in that first half. Elanga going to show why the academy will always, always be central to Manchester United. Because youngsters play different. Elanga is somebody that I've spoken about quite a bit here on United People's TV. Somebody who saw an opportunity coming for him in the season ahead or in the preseason with everybody away due to Euro 2020. He knew that there was going to be chances. Spent the whole summer getting shredded. Athletic, built, ready for success. And he's taken advantage of every opportunity that he's had. And every time he plays, I just get more and more impressed by him. Elanga's doing really well, and I think he absolutely deserves to keep his place in this starting eleven. For what is on paper a harder game, I would say. Um, Brentford, they play good ball, man. They do play good ball. Um, <clears throat> Aston Villa, we dominated them in that first half. Saying that, they were in the game, in and out of the game. Is it a harder game? They're both difficult, right? Villa Park, and this will be the first time I believe we're playing at Brentford's new ground. Um, but I don't think Elanga's going to get kicked out of the eleven. I'll get onto the attack soon. I would say it's going to be that back five, De Gea, De Lot, and uh, Tellez on the wings. And I don't think Maguire should be coming back in for Lindelof. Not right now. I don't think Manchester United's... I mean, you, you could argue, say, Sam, look, man, well, you conceded two goals in the last 20 minutes. Of course, our defence is an issue. I would say the issue wasn't our defence. I say the issue was all around here. This is what pissed me off the most about watching that game against Villa, right? Because yeah, if, we, if we rewind here... The ball's up here. Fred, who's a central midfielder, by the way, was up there aggressively pressing. He wins the ball back there, plays Bruno in there. Oh, shit. That's a circle, not the ball. Moving on. Um, ball, bang, off the bar, in. Wicked. United 2-0 up. Fred's aggressive press was really central 
to that goal. That's Bruno, not Fred. But what Fred did after that blew my mind. Manchester United going into the last 20 minutes of the game, all you have to do at that point is control the game. All you need to do is make sure that Villa do not have that ball. Control it, pass it round. This is what United are bad at. This is what United of old could do so often. We could do like 50, 60 passes just like that all around. Teammates making space, passing it around in triangles, in squares, little ball over there, maybe a little diagonal down there. Why not? Easy. We could waste plenty of time simply by having the ball. This team cannot do that. Not with this formation, not with these players. Fred can the, the, the footballing, the lack of footballing IQ, I said it on my live stream this morning, of Fred to be up here and the press getting beaten and all of a sudden Matic is tasked with covering all of this space. If being honest, look, all of that space. He can't do that. Even, even a prime Matic would probably struggle with that. Actually, no, I think a prime Matic would be able to do it. But Fred left his teammate exposed and we were just massively exposed in midfield. I think absolutely you're going to see McTominay coming back in this game. <clears throat> and I think there has to be a question mark about what formation we use. Because a 4-2-3-1, it certainly worked in that first 30 against um, Aston Villa. And I think he'll probably stick with it. But I think there has to be a question about whether we, saw, whether we see this at some point. Because I just feel... And it's not because... Uh, I've, we've all spoken about Van der Beek for a lot, haven't we? For a long, long time. I just feel that Manchester United, maybe, we get more out of that. What is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No, I didn't think so. Whoops. Sorry, Langer. Well, Langer can stay on. I thought I, I put too many players on pitch. we would definitely win then. I probably would still draw, actually. Um, but look, and that might be a little bit harsh on Elanga because of how good he was being, but... United lacking control. Now, the, your, your first question here is going to be, Sam, there's going to be, look at all these spaces down here. And I would say, yeah, we've not got much natural width in that game, but that is exactly what, and this is what annoyed me about the 4 2 and people saying the 4 2 didn't work. Both of these formations can work if our fullbacks are doing their job properly. That's why modern day fullbacks exist. This formation didn't exist back in the day. Straight 4-4-2, four, four, two, two wingers, boom, overlapping fullbacks occasionally, very lovely. But the width came from the two wide midfielders. It doesn't work in this formation. The width comes from Tellez and Delot, Delo, sorry, going forward. And by this, we have an extra body in midfield. Now, of course, there's question marks about, is that, can McTominay really play that position on his own? No, we've kind of seen that before. Could Fred play that? No, there's compromise everywhere. But this is a compromise which brings an extra body in midfield. It really does. Now, this, is, this isn't the team I think that's going to start against Brentford, but I think it's something that we should really be considering. And it, that's what makes it all the more strange, I suppose, that Donny van der Beek has not got any sort of sniff. Because if you look at the... When was it? I don't know what game it was and he came on for the last 20 minutes. And United all of a sudden had more control in midfield because we simply had an extra player there. There was always an extra pass on in the middle. And that gives you more control. And United need that. United desperately need that. I don't know whether it's going to come in this game. It kind of strikes me that it probably won't. I can't imagine there's going to be too much change going forward, but there has to be some change in attack, right? Because there's the one thing that's been working under Ralph Ragnick, right? Defensively, we have been stronger, saying that. We did concede two in the last 20 against Villa. But we are conceding less. We're just creating less opportunities. Now, one thing that we obviously know is going to happen, <clears throat> and it's not, because, it's not because Cavani's a terrible player, but it's because Cristiano Ronaldo. He comes back into the team. That means Bruno is going to have a hell of a game on his hands because he can't leave Ronaldo isolated and he can't leave Fred and McTominay without being that third man. So maybe that's going to be... I think Alanga will start. Will Rashford start? Will Sancho start? I hesitate to say he's going to keep both of them in there. Rashford's been out of form. Sancho's been out of form. And if I'm looking at form, I'm probably going to be starting Greenwood and Alanga. First half against... Um, against Villa, was the first time that I remember Manchester United having two players on the wings. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, there's, something, there's, there's potential here. They were skipping past man. They were doing decent runs, good passing, good movement. Hadn't seen that in a while. It's always been like one player you rely on, whether, like, whether that was Rashford in good form or maybe Sancho in a decent game. But we had threat from both wings, I thought. So I think he's going to stick with that. I think the only change we're going to see is Cavani coming in, coming out, sorry, for Ronaldo. <clears throat> 
and Matic dropping out for McTominay. I might be wrong. Of course, well, odds are I probably am wrong. Uh, but that leaves a very, very strong bench, of course. You've got Sancho there. You've got Rashford there. You've got Cavani there. You've got Van der Beek there. And what I think we need to see, because there was no problem with how United played in that first 30 minutes against Villa. We pressed as a unit. We worked as a team. It worked perfectly. Collectively, it worked. Front to back, fantastic opening 30. And then the control just slipped. But even then, we got the second goal. At that point, <clears throat> I want to see more in-game management from both Ralph Radnick and from the players themselves. If we're 2-0 up going into the last 20 minutes against Brentford, I don't want to see Fred chasing the ball. I don't want to see Fred pressing up here, leaving a huge space. I want to see Fred sitting in his shape. Leave the running for Greenwood, for Elanga, for whoever's on the wings. Leave the running for Bruno. Give him the ball. Let them take the attacks on. Players have to be smart. And that's what that last 20 minutes against Villa showed me that we weren't. We just weren't smart. Weren't street smart, weren't game smart. It was just poor. Bruno, I think, is going to be crucial. Obviously, he got two goals against Brentford. Uh, sorry, against Aston Villa. Hopefully, he gets two goals against Brentford too. I'll take that. Uh, but he operated very centrally. He kind of stuck. Bruno, in the last few games, kind of just been running wherever he wants. He's like, yeah, I'm playing everywhere. Playing every single position. He kind of stuck to his guns. Stayed centrally. Stayed in that sort of role. Uh, and that's when Bruno really affected the game very well. <clears throat> but I think if you're going to play Ronaldo, he's going to be slightly more isolated than Cavani. So he has to be a little bit tighter to Ronaldo sometimes. Therefore, he's really going to have to track back properly. It's going to be harder for him. But that would be my starting eleven. Who would be in yours? Would you put Rashford in there? Would you put Sancho in there? Would you keep Would you keep Cavani in there or Matic? Sure, a left back. You let me know what you think in the comments below. But that's my starting eleven. I don't think I've got any mistakes. No, I think they're all actually available to play. Let me see what you think in the comments below. But we've seen result. We've had results under Ragnik. We've had clean sheets under Ragnik. We've had bit part performances under Ragnik. We need a front to back, a zero to 90 minute performance, a complete team performance. We need to see that against Brentford. It won't be easy, but so, I, I always say that like in the last couple of weeks, the penny has to drop at some point with this United team. And I hope it drops against Brentford and I hope it drops for the full 90. That's what we need to see. But that's my team. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Make sure you please subscribe to United People's TV if you are new and drop a like on the video too. Until next time though, until after the game tomorrow, take it easy.